Welcome back to Alpaca Man. It's great to see you again. Hello, welcome back, welcome back. It is June 22nd, 2020. And today we tackle the mystery, the controversy that is lard soap, both hot process and cold process. So the first thing we need to do is figure out where does lard come from and what is it. Well, lard comes from these cute little guys, but you might recognize it as this. This is how it looks before the butcher trims off the fat and processes it into a nice little brick, just like butter. Sunday morning, we decided we were going to start with hot process because it went so fast and then I thought I could quickly turn it around and do a cold process right after that and be done by lunchtime. It started out well enough. I had my lard, my coconut oil, my um, beeswax all in the crock pot and was pouring in the lye, which was clear and cool. And I noticed right away that the lye was, or I mean the, um, the soap batter was not coming together. There was a lot of fat floating and I, I uh, thought, well, okay, let me just, you know, stir it up some more. And then I realized when I looked in the bottom of the lye pitcher that there was a solid puck or solid circle of something on the bottom of the pitcher. I thought, all right, I'm not sure what happened there, but I'm just going to keep going. And this is as liquid as liquid gets. And it dawned on me that something went wrong with the lye solution. It, instead of uh, incorporating into the water after stirring it and letting it sit to clear, somehow it had sunk to the bottom and made a little round brick. I thought about it quickly based on my very limited experience and uh, thought, all right, it's clear to me that there is now a very weak lye solution in there. And what needs to happen is I need to re-add some lye in solution in order to fix this weak lye solution that I don't know what went wrong. So that's what I did and cue the clip. This is an example of volcanoing. And a, there's a couple of different variations of what happened that can cause this. Uh, too much liquid in the pot when it gets to the foaming stage, the stage between applesauce and mashed potatoes, that transition stage, um, that can cause it. Extreme temperature difference between oils and lye can do it, although in this case, there was not an extreme temperature difference because the lye solution that I added secondarily, I accounted for the water that was already in there, I reduced the water, so I upped the concentration of lye and water, and put in much less, you know, accounting for the volume than I did initially. So what do you think happened? Was this an unmitigated disaster or no? And we haven't even gotten to the lard controversy yet. I'm happy to report it processed itself on its merry way to Vaseline stage without me once I stirred it down. It, uh, I, I was cleaning up soap foam glop as quickly as I could, tossing it all into a cardboard box and that was sitting inside a plastic bag with gobs and gobs of paper towels. And some of you know, paper towels are not used in my house ever, if I can help it. I madly scrambled to get it into the mold. This was still a very soft um, batter. Even though it was Vaseline stage, it was not as thick as the, uh, or gloppy, I should say, as the olive oil we did previously last week. And I lost about 
25% uh, of the total volume that should have gone into the mold and then whatever would be left over for uh, samples. I'm not unhappy yet. We'll have to see what happens when I cut it tomorrow morning, which will be just a few seconds for you, as it was last time. Did I mention the camera died twice again? I think it's time for a new battery. Let's move on. I'm going to run pictures. You can see what it looks like and so forth. But what I really want to talk about is what went wrong, because I think there's some things to learn from this. And the first thing is that the saponification value of the oils was different this time than the first two loaves that I've done. And that has a direct impact on how quickly lye will transform it. It's a big, long, hairy topic that I don't have enough knowledge about to speak intelligently about, but I think that is part of what happened. What you're looking at right now is what is happening to my brand new crock pot. You can see that there is a coating starting to develop. And I assure you it's not because I'm not using hot water and... Uh, taking appropriate measures to get as much of the soap residue, the fats and oil residue off before I start a new batch. But what you're seeing left behind is both soap residue, that's that iridescence, and uh, a combination, I think, of hard water and maybe leftover lye solution that is actually etching the inside of the pot and it is now no longer returnable nor can I ever use it for food period end of sentence what did I do to clean up the outside of the pot and clean up that uh, residue in this crock pot well for the crock pot vinegar because I have hard water I soap with distilled water but I wash my utensils and so forth in my regular tap water and it's already doing a number on the crock pot. Uh, it's the same thing that happens when you have hard water and you constantly have a ring in your uh, throne bowl. Uh, the, the hard water minerals are actually etching that water line into your porcelain throne bowl. How do I know this? Uh, I've fooled around with ceramics and that kind of thing for almost my whole lifetime to clean up the outside of that crock pot, which is stainless. I used isopropyl alcohol, wiped everything down, got all of the residue off, and uh, we're back in business again. But pay attention to the bottom of the crock pot and make sure you get stuff off of the bottom. And also your cord, so that when you start over again, you don't have soap burning on the outside or the inside of your heating portion of your pot. So, was it a disaster? Was it a success? You be the judge. I feel very blessed that I have not yet ruined my brand new expensive cutting mat. And so I'll leave you with this thought, which was on a dog tag that I really should make into a bracelet. By as always, comments, questions, concerns in the comment boxes. Visit us on Instagram or go to this Alpaca Made website or see us on Twitter. God bless you. See you soon. <laughs>